All right, everybody. Welcome back to Tom's Guide, the second installment of this um, video series. My name is Tom Cormier. I'm well over a six-figure a month eBay seller, coach, mentor. I run my own Facebook group and YouTube channel. And I was asked by sale freaks to you know, use their program in order to see if I can increase my results in my eBay dropshipping business. And based off this graph, I started on the 21st, which is right here, based off, or 22nd. Based off this graph, you can see that um, so far I've been having some pretty positive results. So I have I just wanted to post this video. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be going over just the, the global settings and how to set up your Sale Freaks account and connect it with your eBay. But I also wanted to give a little bit of motivation at the beginning on just, you know, the sales that I've been getting so far through this one account using Sale Freaks have been absolutely insane. Um, never in my life did I think on Tuesday of this week I was going to hit $8,200 in sales and have an overall sales day of $13,000. That had to have been well over $1,000 in profit. And I'm going to punch all the numbers for a later video just to show you guys that I've been like pulling some insane numbers for sale freaks. So now that the motivation's out of the way, I'm just going to get right into just how to set up the global settings of sale freaks and how to get into everything and you know connect it with your eBay account. So once you get to Sale Freaks, you click on, I mean, you get to the, the overall page, you connect your eBay account, you're ready, you're in here, you click settings, you go to global settings, and you make sure it's the proper eBay account that you want. So I mean, I'm going to have this blurred out, but this is my eBay account that I want. There's a drop down box. You'll see if you have multiple eBay accounts connected to it. <clears throat> so I'm going to get right into the, like the nitty gritty details for the eBay final value fees. If you have an eBay store, put 9.15%. And that's just the fees that you get charged every single sale. If you don't have a store, which I highly suggest you do, make sure it's 10% if you don't have a store. PayPal transaction fees, those it differ over time, uh, over where you live. So I'm in the United States, it's 2.9% and 30 cents for every transaction. If you live in uh, outside of the United States, international, as I've heard, have up to like 4.4% and so on. So the Amazon sales tax markup, I'm tax exempt on all of my accounts. And this is one thing where you don't, you probably don't want to copy what I'm doing. If you're not tax exempt, sale SBA stands for sold by Amazon. You will almost always get charged sales tax on sold by Amazon. The highest sales tax in the United States is around 10%. If you want to cover yourself completely, you can put 10% in there. But for me, I, back before I was tax exempt, I would do around like eight, 8.5%, you know, because not every single state gets charged the same tax. FBA fulfilled by Amazon. A lot of them don't get charged sales tax, but some of them still do. I would put in around two to three percent if I were you, and that's about it for the t the sales tax part of this, the markup. So quantity, I always put my quantities at two. But if you have a, you want to keep in mind that if you have a very beginner account and you have very low listing limits, then you might want to put your quantity at one. So if you have a listing limit of say five hundred items and you put your quantity at one, then you can list five hundred items. But if you have a listing limit of five hundred items you put your quantity at two, then you can only list 250 individual items because it's a quantity of two and that multiplies up to 500. So keep that in mind based off how many items you want to list. And I suggest putting more items up in the beginning. So having a lower quantity in the beginning, just because of the fact that the more items up there, the more sales you're going to get and just the more growth that your account will see early on. So this um, sale free street price and profit range, that's, this is basically going to be, you know, something arbitrary to you or just, it's very, you know, it's your own opinion on what you want. I'm willing to take a lower front end profit margin just because of the fact that I have so many just cash back credit cards and there's the ability to go through a cash back monitor below, which I'll explain later. And I mean, I'm, a, I'm willing to accept two to 10% profit and, you know, work the cash back on the back end and other types of just ways to get extra money out of this. If you want to have higher profits on the front end and say you can't get the cash back credit cards that I have, then maybe you want to put it to like five to 10% or something like that. But it's really all up to you on the profit range that you want to set your listings at. So this is also um, something up to you. This is the minimal profit per sale. Some people like to get high profits for every sale. Like they won't accept the sale less than $2 profit or something like that. I'm not one of those people. I'm a big volume seller. I like to do volume. I like to push out a lot of sales every day. And I'm, I'm a big believer in little profits add up over time if you're doing 200, 300 plus sales a day. So I chose my default minimum at 10 cents. The 10 cents is on the front end. And I'm obviously going to get more money on the back end through my cash back cards and other stuff like that. Supporting the open box option. So the open box option is probably one of the best features so far about sale freaks that I found that sets it apart from other repricing tools. I'm going to go into a whole nother video on it, but you need to have at least a 5,000 item plan to use the open box condition, but I'm going to explain it completely in another um, video. So I'm going to leave that for um, then. 
So the auto message to a buyer after the item was purchased, this is going to be a message that says something like along the lines of thank you for buying my product. You know, we'll send out your tracking information, blah, 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 stuff like that. I don't use an auto message after somebody buys an item because I have another program set up that is just has been in use for about six or seven months that I've been using that does it. But um, if I didn't have that program in place, which you guys might not, then I would highly suggest just enabling it and, you know, custom tailoring the uh, message to what you want. So the template, I'm going to do a whole video on how to, you know, op, uh, change your template and make it something that you want to make it. But for now, I would suggest just using the default template. Um, the default template, I've, I've um, just altered mine a bit, but I think the default template would be good for just beginners getting started right off the bat. So the total number of images to upload, I use 12. So the reasoning or the idea behind that is that the more images you have, the higher the SEO of your item is and like the more visibility it might see. So something like this will say the image only has, say the item only has five images. It'll take the first image, the main image and repeat it seven more times up to 12. Um, I've never seen anything wrong with this happening and I've never seen anything like really ex exponentially better for doing this. I just do it anyways. It's just out of re like just something I've been doing for a while. So I really don't think it, it matters that much. Hide my UPC. This isn't really that big. If you're just getting started, I don't even do it. I have it disabled and that's basically a way that you can, you know, use different UPCs to alter yourself so that you might not fall under like, you know, how eBay switching to the buy box type related thing, kind of more like Amazon. If you change your UPC, you might not fall under it anymore. You might be able to different, differentiate yourself that way. So let's get into something right here. Amazon vendor type. So I use prime only, but you could also use non prime. Um, let's change this and just check. There's prime, prime priority, best offer. I just use prime only. I only re really want to deal with items that are prime and I, I have my settings set up that way. So I only deal with items that are prime Amazon add on monitoring. There's no, you cannot buy at the moment. You cannot do add on items anymore. So just keep this disabled prime fulfillment type. Um, I only use all, I use all prime. There's also, if you want to check, there's only fulfilled by Amazon or only sold by Amazon. I don't think it matters at all. I just use all prime. I haven't seen any problem with this and it gives you more options. Um, so this is where you're going to want to put in your business policies. There is a way that sale freaks has their custom settings right off the bat. So you can just go based off what sale freaks suggests, but I have my own shipping return payment policy. I'm not going to get into those in this video because I don't think that's the scope of this video, but it's basically, you know, um, as fast as shipping as possible while still having fast and free on my listing, 30 day free returns and immediate payment is basically the gist of how I have everything set up. And that's how I have all my, that's what I have all my items under. For location, item location, I'm a big multiple locations guy. I, I'm a firm believer that if you have the wrong um, zip code set up on your account, I mean, you can have where you live as your zip code, but that isn't where your items are coming from. So that's why I just say multiple locations. And I've called a few eBay reps and they say that that's okay as well. So this is the PayPal account to buy gift cards on sale free. So a lot of international buyers are going to be buying gift cards for sale freaks in order to um, do their auto ordering or their ordering in general. And sale freaks will rip the um, email that you sign up with as your PayPal email right off the bat. But if that's not your PayPal email, then you want to make sure that your proper PayPal email is put in here, which is what I have at the moment. Um, I'm not using this feature. I'm using my own credit cards, but a lot of internationals will find this feature um, very helpful for them. So the minimal negative profit allowed for an automatic purchase, I have it set to zero. Some people might want to set it to like what their minimum profit margin is. Sometimes like sales tax comes into play and other things like that will come into play where you know, the item won't go through if you set up, you know, just some sort of barrier like that. Um, I'm really not a big, I, I don't really, I'm not a big warrior about that. I don't, I don't worry too much about, you know, a negative profit here and there because of the fact that I just try to work the overall game that my items are going to be, you know, net positive at the end of the day. I'll take a few losses here and there. Disable auto order for high priced items. This is if you want to like, you know, make sure and check the, if the order is a certain price, like $500 or whatever, you don't want the auto order to do it. You want to do it on your own. It's kind of a security check. And then that's the amount restriction you can put in $500 or $300. I don't use it. I, I'm not worried about it at all. I trust sale freaks auto ordering program. And I don't, I want to make everything as automated as possible. I don't want to be in there doing, you know, like, you know, the, the grunt work in my business. But at the beginning, when you first start off, you might want to. Um, so auto order bundling method. This is basically to bundle add-on items with non-add-on items in order to like break the $25 threshold that they have. But everything's changed now and add-on items no longer work. So you can just keep this disabled. It doesn't really matter anymore. And as, long, as well as the maximum auto order delay time, that was in order to find like wait a certain amount of time in order to like 
put the add-on items with not add-on items. So you don't have to worry about this. I just have a default at one hour. That's what it was kind of set at to begin with. So use sales tax table on eBay. The default right here I have is set to disabled, but I actually should have this enabled. I do have two sales tax tables set up, but this is already set up on my eBay settings anyways. But if you do not have a business in the United States or any, like if you don't think that you should be cre like collecting sales tax, you shouldn't be. If you don't have an LLC or some type of business in the United States, do not start collecting sales tax for random states, you will get in trouble. So PayPal mass pay is a way to pay a bunch of payments at once, I think, for like gift cards and other stuff and receive like discounts. I don't use PayPal mass pay. And when you're first starting, I don't think that it, it will really matter at all to you. So listing in multiple stores, stealth mode. This is also a thing that is for the very advanced user. I don't even use stealth accounts. Stealth accounts is basically when you would set up different PayPal accounts connected to different, you know, information so that you can like make sure that your eBay accounts aren't really connected. I have three eBay accounts and mine are all connected on the same PayPal. I don't really see a need for stealth mode at the moment, but I do see that, you know, it could be a thing um, in the future. When you're a beginner, it does not matter though. Do not mess with this setting. So we're going to get down to the last two settings, which I think are the two most interesting settings. I'm going to make individual videos about both of these. So sales hunter seems to be one of the coolest features about sale freaks that I've seen along with open box, just function that they have. So sales hunter is basically where based off of what your items per month plan is, you get a certain allowed amount of just um, sellers that you can monitor. So what it says here is sales hunter is a bot which tracks your competitors 24 seven to text items they sell and list them, list them to your store. So based off how many items that you have um, as a, just a plan with sale freaks is how many um, sellers that you can just track. So I think it goes up to a hundred. You can track up to a hundred sellers. And if they sell an item within 24 hours, it will be listed up to your account. So then basically it's you doing item research without even having to do item research. All you have to do is find a good seller and then leave them there, set it and forget it. And you'll be listing their good items as well. Hopefully trying to get a piece of the pie on, you know, a hot selling item. So I've never seen another program that has this. And I think that this is one just like very, very creative and very awesome feature about sale freaks that really sets them apart from other, other repricing tools and other things, softwares out there. So I cannot wait to make a video on this and just with my results and actually start using it. I'm very excited for this. And last but not least, there is cash back website. So right now, Sale Freaks is taking a little bit of a different route that I'm really liking with the cash back. I have yet to um, fully enable it with, all, with my account and you know get all my accounts set up. But so far, they're integrated with Be Frugal and Mr. Rebate, soon to be top cash back. And I think top cash back is the best out of all of them. So I'm very excited for that. But the one thing that Sale Freaks has that I haven't seen on any other auto ordering program, I have seen auto, I have seen and used auto ordering programs that use go through cash back portals before. But Sale Freaks has the option to set up and basically set up as many accounts as you want. So you can just put in your username, your password, daily item purchases, max daily item purchases. So say you don't want to get caught. So Be Frugal is very like is a big stickler on if you abuse the cash back for Amazon.com on their website, they will ban you. But say you make like 20 or 30 Be Frugal accounts in one day and you set a max daily item purchases of say 10 and then you iterate through all of those accounts every day, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. You do 300 orders in a day, 10 on 30 different accounts, then it should lower your risk of getting banned on these accounts and maximize the profit that you could be making on every single sale. I cannot wait to get this all set up and like figured out. And I also want to try Mr. Rebates because I've used them in the past, but I do not know how harsh they are on shutting down Amazon, you know, bulk resellers and purchasers. And I know that Be Frugal is very, a big stickler on it. Top Cashback is less of a stickler on Amazon, but they'll, they'll still ban your account after, you know, like thousands of sales or orders, I mean but I'm not sure how Mr. Rebates is and I'm excited to test that out because I haven't seen Mr. Rebates on any other stores or any other uh, repricing tools. So I hope I didn't go too fast for you guys. That is all of your settings. Afterwards, if I move myself, you just want to click save down there. Um, one thing that I haven't said in anywhere yet, if you're a beginner and you have any real questions, click here. They have uh, Sale Freaks has a customer service team and they've responded to me very quickly every single time I've ever used it. Um, and I've had a few questions. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm starting off on this. I mean, I have seen some very good results, but I'm starting off on this just like you guys are. And I want to bring you guys along on my journey. So I hope that a little bit of motivation at the beginning, the $8,200 sales day, I mean, that's not regular. That's not something that will happen every single day yet. Hopefully, maybe in the future. 
But I mean, I hope I gave you guys a little bit of motivation with that. And just, just a thought out there that, you know, the big, big name repricing tools, I'm not going to name any out there might not be the best ones out there. Just because they're the cheapest doesn't mean they're the best. You get what you paid for sale freaks so far has blown my mind with just it's in depth, like the way that it goes about everything. It's so in depth and has just so many features on it that other repricing tools don't have. And it, I mean, I can't be happier at the moment. I'm going to make another video coming up next and next week. It'll probably come out at the beginning of next week. And that's going to be all on the locator tool and how to actually get items and list them onto your account. So I hope this video was very helpful for you guys. If you're a beginner, if you're not a beginner, I hope you still learn something out of this. And I mean, I hope you guys are appreciating this type of video that I'm coming out and creating for you guys. And if you like it, please send a like, put your comments below. Let's get some um, let's get some questions going on this. I, I want to see what the beginners are having problems with, and I just want to see like where I can tailor my videos to in the future to make you guys you know just the best content that I can possibly put out there. So that's about it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for coming by. I very much appreciate it, and look into sale freaks, please. I'll see you.